Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Sulky, express yourself with sulky and create with confidence. Brother, it's so easy with brother at your side. And Quilt Cut, easy fabric cutting for quilters. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community. I'm Mary-Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with Kimmy Bruner. Kimmy is a two-time international machine quilting teacher of the year and a handy quilter ambassador. Welcome, Kimmy. Thank you, Mary-Kate. I'm pleased to be here. Yes, thank you so much for making time out of your, what I understand to be very busy schedule. No problem. To uh, visit with us and to talk about your background and what brought you here today. Um, I know you travel a lot mm -hmm. um, and you're teaching around the world mm -hmm. and um, you've been teaching since 2005. Yep, dragged into it kicking and screaming <laughs> all the way, did not want to be a teacher and I took to it like a duck to water and I love it. Well, why didn't you want to be a teacher? Because it would involve getting up in front of people and talking. But as you may have found out for yourself, I have no trouble no, with talking. No, I haven't so. <laughs> perceived that as being an issue at all. Well, let's, let's backtrack then. So, you know, what got you into quilting in the first place? I have, a, or I had a quilting grandma oh, nice. who learned from her mother. Mm -hmm. um, so we had a lot of quilting history in our family. And when I was a little girl, um, my sisters and I spent a lot of our school vacations at grandma's farm. And I loved my grandma. I wanted to be exactly like grandma. So anything that she wanted to teach me to do, I was totally mm. all for it. And she taught me how to knit and crochet and embroider and, of course, quilt. And once I got bit by the quilting bug, I never looked back. Okay. So, so you've been doing it since you were just mm -hmm. a wee tot. Yep. I kind of took a vacation from it for a couple of years when I was a teenager. And I was busy sure. you know, doing horrible teenager things. Um, but then when my kids were little, I got back into it and just, I had to ask myself why I had ever left. Mm. So, um, started quilting and once again, just got into it big time. Well, what kind of quilting were you doing when you got back into it? This was in the 90s, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Yep, that was in the early 90s. Um, I started just making quilts for my kids and I, I really enjoyed cutting perfectly good fabric apart and yeah. putting it all back together again. Yeah. And I got more and more carried away with the piecing and with the quilting. Um, my quilts got bigger and bigger and I had more and more trouble shoving them through a domestic quilting machine. So you were doing quilting. machine quilting in the 90s? Yes. Which is when, you know, it really was not the fashion. No, no, there were very few long arm mm -hmm. machines back then. They were really very few and far between. And we kind of had to figure out what we were doing on our own. Mm -hmm. um, figure out how to make the machine do the things that we wanted it to do. Um, I started doing a lot of competition quilting, but I found that that really very much robbed me of the joy of quilting. I was making quilts for judges, not for myself. And I ended up with a lot of ribbons, but I didn't care about the ribbons and I didn't like the quilts. Mm. So I thought, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore. So Well, can you tell us about some of these competition quilts that you made? I mean, what kind of style, you know, help us you know, see them in our minds? Um, well, I, I would focus on choosing uh, fabric colors I knew judges would like. I chose mm. designs that fabrics would like. I chose my quilting designs that fabrics or that, uh, judges would like. Um, I was doing quilting for customers then as well. So I would be working on their quilts and doing competition level quilting on their quilts. So I'd get a ribbon, but I didn't even have a quilt to show for it. Interesting. And that was no fun. When so did I you stopped. start long arm quilting for, uh, for pay? Um, boy, back in probably the year 1999, I think I started quilting. So again, kind of at the cusp of mm -hmm. that as a kind of a home industry. Yes. And yep. you, so you've really seen an evolution in long arm machines over the years yes. and oh, how yeah. they've evolved and yep. um, developed. Mm -hmm. What do you like about new machines that... Um, oh, I just love all the bells and whistles. I, uh, I quilt on a handy quilter Avante at home and okay. I love how the older machines were really big and really heavy and if okay. you wanted to do really intense quilting it would just wear out your body because you were trying to move this huge vibrating machine around mm -hmm. and get it to do little mm -hmm. tiny microscopic work i love how light and maneuverable the new machines are okay. i can quilt for hours and i never get tired I, I i run out of time in the day before i get tired so um the the size and maneuverability has greatly improved since okay. i first started okay um so you you were had this home machine business mm -hmm. and you were doing it for people and mm -hmm. earning ribbons but then you just got to a point where 
that wasn't yeah. working for you anymore. No, it wasn't fun. And so kicking and screaming, let's go back to that. Oh, kicking and totally kicking and screaming. Um, some friends of mine who owned a quilt show was like, you know what, you do really good work and we really want you to teach. And I was like, no, 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 not doing it. I liked being in my house. I liked being really private and really mm -hmm. quiet. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't even imagine getting up in front of a room full of people and talking. And they were like, no, 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 seriously, you're going to be good. And I thought they were nuts. I thought, you know what, the, the class is going to get up in a group and walk out because they're going to be so bored. Mm -hmm. um, and I I like I said earlier I just took to it like a duck to water I loved it um, the students seemed to love it and I have not looked back since I teach nationally and internationally and I have DVDs and I, I just I never run out of things to teach my students I work almost ex exclusively with beginners I love seeing their light bulbs go off I love seeing that moment when they understand that they can do this too, that they can go mm -hmm. from no skills to, wow, I can do this, I can make a quilt that looks really pretty, and I can be proud of it. That's so. great. Well, to t walk us through a little bit. What does a class of yours look like? Um, I'm really a tech junkie. I love high-tech stuff. Um, so I do a lot of lectures with PowerPoint programs, with a lot of media, a lot of graphics. Okay. I draw on my computer and uh, project the image on a screen so that the students can see exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, I am able to show a large number of students way more detail than I could show them if we were doing a hands-on class because I can get them, you know, with their noses two inches away from the needle where I'm working so they can really see mm -hmm. what I'm doing in a way that they couldn't if we were working hands-on. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us, like, who attends your classes? Um, you know, more experienced people. You said you love working with beginners. Yeah. Um, what do you say to beginners to convince them that this is something that with a lot of time and dedication, obviously, you don't just, you know, come out of the womb knowing how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it is accessible. And oh, whereas I think a lot of us, and I, I do count myself among those things sometimes like, oh, I, I could never do that. Oh, and I just take you step by step through, look at this quilt. It's not, it's like the old um, saying of you don't eat an elephant in one bite. You eat it in a lot of little bites. Yeah. So you look at a quilt and you break it down into little bites. What is the skeleton? What are the bones of that quilt? What do you start with? How do you, what kind of fillers will you choose? How will you come up with a quilt that is a cohesive whole mm -hmm. instead of just a whole bunch of motifs thrown onto a quilt to just get the layers tied together? Mm -hmm. um, and I I make samples, such as the quilt that's behind me, mm -hmm. I make samples that a confident beginner could accomplish. I don't do anything that's really difficult. I, some of it is time consuming, but it's not difficult. And okay. then I show them, you know, look, this quilt looks really, really cool, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a gorgeous. quilt that a, a confident beginner could do. You don't have to have 15 years of experience under your belt to do it. If you've been on your machine for six, six months, maybe a year, you can do a quilt like that. Really? You just break it down into simpler fillers, simpler techniques, and off you go. And is that a technique that you, a, te a class that you teach about how to, how do you approach it? How do you design your quilting? You know, when we say quilt is desired, well, you know, That's what do you ball. desire? How do you even know what you desire? I'm working on a class for upcoming shows that is going to um, talk specifically about that because that has been a problem for me in the past. What does quilt right. as desired mean? Mm -hmm. When you don't know how to quilt something, how are you supposed to take those three little scary words and turn it into a quilt? So I, that's, uh, like I said, an upcoming class. I will teach people how to quilt as desired. How do you mm -hmm. even start mm -hmm. to quilt mm -hmm. as desired? Because a lot of people, you know, they, they, they do. They fear the quilting part. Maybe mm -hmm. they're turned off by the tedium of basting, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's tedious. Yeah, That's all there is to mm -hmm. it. But there's something so satisfying about seeing those three layers become yes. something completely new yes. and completely transformed. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tell us a little bit about the quilt that's behind you. You have a, a funny name for it. That well, is my Avatar quilt. Um, I decided to make that quilt when I went to see the movie Avatar. You know, most normal people just go and watch a movie and go, ooh, look. And right. I was watching this movie, and they had some dragons in the movie. And, of course, I'm always thinking quilting. And I thought, you know, I have fabric just like that dragon skin. And my husband was like, shut up, just eat the popcorn and watch the movie. <laughs> and then another dragon came in, and I was like, oh, I have fabric like that one. We have to go. We have to go because I want to make this quilt. And he was like, no, no, no. We're staying for the end of the movie so we got home from the movie and I just marched immediately right. to my sewing machine or my sewing room and started pulling 
fabrics out of my stash and the quilt pretty much made itself. I pulled those two dragon fabrics out and the rest of it just fell together. So I used a lot of tools and templates on it mm -hmm. because I wanted it to look perfect. But the piecing simple, the quilting is simple. And then I painted it to embellish it okay. at the very end. So It's beautiful. It's Thank beautiful. You. You're talking about you used tools and templates mm -hmm. to, to develop that look. And again, I think, you know, sometimes we think that this is just, you know, the, the quilting gods reached out of the heavens and touched you on the shoulder and you were just Not at able all. to do this. And you do use tools and I do. techniques to achieve this look. So I don't know if there's anything you can tell us about how these templates relate to the quilt that's in front of us. Um, I came up with my line of templates because I wanted to be able to create the bones of my quilt and have it look really, really perfect and then fill it in with freehand work. Okay. And I could not find tools on the market that would allow me to do what I wanted to do. So I ended up coming with, you know, if you can't find it, you just make it. Right, so right. I ended up coming up with my own line of templates that allow me to create those that basic skeleton and then I can fill it in with any freehand work or more template work that, that I might want to do. Uh, to accomplish to create a, the finished design that is what I want. And it's gorgeous work. I know you said that um, negative space is an evil thing. Not something that you enjoy, <laughs> no, and so you no. really like to. If God did not want us to use great big 5,000 yard cones of thread, he would not have made the great big 5,000 yard cones of thread. I think you should use all the thread on the quilt that you can. It should just be quilted. Well, it's it's really spectacular work. Thank you. And um, we're really happy to have you here today. And um, we're going to be talking about, in another episode, how to use these templates, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. um, a little bit more detailed, a little bit more um, hands-on for people to see how that works. Yep, so you can see that you won't faint using templates. They're really easy and you get really killer cool results. So it's worth trying. And it's something that a person with a domestic machine can benefit Absolutely. from. It's yeah. You don't have mm -hmm. to have a long arm yep. or a mid arm mm -hmm. or anything like that. You can use it yep. with your domestic machine Absolutely. too. Absolutely, uh, a different way of accomplishing the same results. Right, right. Yep. Well, thank you so much for coming. No problem, thank it's you for been, having me. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope you'll come back, join us again next time. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters. Sulky, express yourself with sulky and create with confidence. Brother, it's so easy with brother at your side. And Quilt Cut, easy fabric cutting for quilters.